it is insecurity, social and political insecurity, that have led to self-determination moves. I don't like the word separatist. Inam the Kanu is not a separatist. He's a self-determination movement person. And self-determination is recognized by all international instruments, including the United Nations Charter, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the Economic and Political Charter. It's recognized all over the world. So it's not... It, it, I pop that he has formed about 2012 did not start as a violent organization. They were marching on the streets of furniture, Oka, Aba, Oweri, Umwahia, and other places, saying we want self determination. Give us Biafra. They were peaceful. They were blowing whistles, wearing berets. Until 14th. Of September 2017, when the Nigerian army through Operation Python Dance invaded the ancestral home of Eze Kanu, the father of Nnamdi Kanu, at Afara Uku, Ibeku, Umuahia, in Nabia State. 28 defenseless and unarmed Nigerians were killed in that bloody invasion. And then the Kanu managed to escape with the whiskers and by providence. Landing in Rome and later Israel, where he swore to Afidavis as regards why he had to run for his dear life. So let me tell Mr. President, sir, let me use this opportunity to beg you, Mr. President, sir. On my bended knees, most genuflectingly, even as our case is right now before the Supreme Court, without prejudice to the outcome, release Nam the Kanu immediately. <laughs> it will help to bring peace. And tranquility to the southeast. It is not the other way around. We are not saying you should subvert the judicial process by doing this. You can instruct your attorney general, who has the powers under section 174 of the constitution, to enter a nolle prosecute, a total discontinuance of the whole case. What will bring peace? to the southeast towards 2023 is not the continued detention of Nam the Kanu who has become a metaphor for the Igbo struggle. It is rather his immediate release to his people and they will be happy. We have 374 ethnic groups in Nigeria, as discovered by Professor Onigu Otite, a great demographer. And of these 374 ethnic groups, we only always re re remember the Hausa Fulanese, the Igbos, and the Yorubas have always asked the question. What happened to the other 371 ethnic groups, of which I am one, a minority, within a minority, from a village called Ivyukwe, near Agenebode, a minority, in Esako, East Local Government Area of Edo State, a minority. Where do you place me? God is not a foolish God. He knew why he planted me there. You must therefore recognize me and give me my full rights as a Nigerian.
Because I'm not here as a clapper and as a spectator. That is one of the problems of insecurity in Nigeria. Marginalization. Non-inclusiveness. Of certain people. Of certain ethnic groups. What happened to the Domas, the Biras? The Chekiris, the Robos, the Jos, the Ogunis, the Ephics, the Bibios, the Esakos, Ishans, Benis, the Bagis, the Zulus, if you just recognize only three to four ethnic groups. That is itself a sleeping magna, magma that can erupt into a volcanic eruption. Economic and financial insecurity come there. That is why voters are giving between five and ten thousand naira, which is just like ten dollars or twelve dollars, to vote for a particular candidate. Some people are selling the next four years just for ten thousand naira. Do you know why? I will tell you. Because they have been so popularized that many of them feel, let me just get this little one. At least I have seen this one because our politicians, after they win, they will forget us. That was what Stalin did. Stalin. He called his people. I said, let me tell you how to popularize your people and make them obey you so that they begin to suffer the Stockholm syndrome the Stockholm syndrome is a syndrome where the slave falls in love with his master at down you will call the master you, you've forgotten you have not yet slapped me since money why don't you put your legs on my head that's Stockholm syndrome so Stanley told the followers Say, bring me a chicken, a fowl. They brought the chicken. He started pulling out the feathers of the chicken, one by one. And the chicken or fowl was creaking, crying, screaming, in pains, in agony. And when Stalin finished plucking out all the feathers, he dropped the chicken on the floor. And the chicken started dwaddling away. In pains and agony. Then Stanley dipped his hands in his pocket and brought out grains. I said, That same chicken that was now going away in pains turned back. Stanley bent down and the chicken started feeding from his palm. He said, That is what you do to your people to marginalize them, then conquer them. Then they will obey you. Is that what we are seeing in Nigeria? Is that why people will buy, will just be giving 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira, and a small mudu of rice, grains of rice, and salt, magi cubes, and you go and vote for a person that you would not have voted for ordinarily? So I have said here in my paper, 35 pages, that we are not actually operating that true gen of democracy which was defined on the 19th of November, 1863, by the great American President Abraham Lincoln in his Gettysburg Declaration, that democracy is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. We are operating different forms of crisis, but not the demo. What are the forms of crisis? have coined out. One is called electionocracy. What is electionocracy? Electionocracy is a form of government that we practice in Nigeria, where at every four-year intervals, we have a ritual of going to the polls to elect or select our leaders. After selecting them, 
the leaders used the first one year, touring around, greeting the people, thanking them. He uses the second year to construct some roads that will be washed away by the first rainfall and build culverts and build hospitals that will not be equipped. Two years have gone. Then by the third year, underground electionary campaign starts. So they have not governed. They have not given democracy dividends. I call it electionocracy. We have a second crit in Nigeria, which is not demo. That is judocracy. Judocracy is a form of crazy where presidents, governors, senators, and House of Representative members, and House of Assemblies, and chairmen of local government councils and legislators are conceived, incubated, and delivered in our course of law when litigation comes over election. So it is not actually the people that are voted for. It's not the candidates voted for by the people through the ballot box that may eventually turn up to be your governor or president. I call it judocracy. I have another form of government that we are practicing. I call it executocracy. Executocracy is a form of government where the president sees that the people should even be grateful for, to him for being their president. He rules maximally. He does what he wants. He behaves like Louis XIV of France, who in 1655 was so intoxicated, so inebriated with power, that he stood in front of parliament and declared imperiously, L'état, c'est moi. I am the state. That is executocracy. We also practice legislatocracy. Legislatocracy is a form of government where we have 360 near idle members of the House of Representatives and 109 senators. All of them, under the Constitution, sitting part-time. The Constitution allows each of them to sit for six months in a year. And that is enough. 